Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. It looks like most everybody has joined us. So again, I just wanted to thank everybody for being here today for our Mega Recruit COB training for this fall. We're going to go over several different things today. I will be leading the training today. My name is Sarah Beth Russell, and my co-host is Hannah Gunderson. We are both on the professional services team as professional services specialists, and we'll be the ones facilitating today, Hannah will be answering any questions that come into the question box. So if you want to go ahead and test that out, now would be a good time. You can drop your name and what school you're with uh, within the question box just to make sure those are coming through. But any questions you have within the webinar, you can go ahead and pop them in there and Hannah will be answering and we'll also have a Q&A at the end where we'll look at that question section. And I'm actually going to turn it over to Hannah now, and she's going to give us a little bit of background information on Omega Phi. Thank you, Sarah Beth. For those that don't know, Omega Phi provides software solutions and services that help nearly 40 national headquarters, their chapters, and campus clubs and groups from more than 650 campuses manage their finances, streamline operations, recruit members, and enhance communication. We've helped our clients process more than $6.8 billion in dues, rent, fees, and more since our founding th over 30 years ago, and we boast a 9 out of 10 customer satisfaction score, so we always appreciate when y'all give us that feedback. Thank you so much, Hannah. So we're going to go ahead and look at the agenda for today. So today we're going to be going over different ways that your chapter can use the Mega Recruit for COB, essentially. So if you're currently in COB following your fall formal recruitment, or maybe your formal recruitment is in spring, or maybe in spring you think you may have some room for COB, this is going to hopefully give you some ideas on how to use the system. So we're going to go over some tips for successful recruitment and then we'll talk about login and account setup for any users you may need to add to the system and then we'll go over reports to be pulled and master reset and then after that we'll actually go into round setup and kind of more of the tips and tools that you can use for cob itself and then at the end we'll have some q a for you guys so for um, tips for a successful recruitment, we go over this with formal recruitment as well, and the same applies to COB, whether that be, again, following formal recruitment or during your off-season where you may be able to do COB, you want to make sure you're following these three steps, making sure that all of your members are able to log in, especially the ones who are going to be voting and can log in at least uh, one week in advance. So check that early. That way you're not running into last minute login issues. And then we say to practice. So we have practice files that you can use in a mega recruit to get familiar with the system and have your members vote. You can do that with COB practice as well, going in and kind of figuring out the tools and functionality. And then for admins training, reviewing any of our, our in-app help articles in our knowledge base, to get comfortable with the system and that way you'll be ready when it comes time to actually vote. So looking at the login, if you have any new members to add to the system, so let's say if your formal recruitment is just ending, you may not have anybody to add to the system, but maybe come spring you'll add any new members you've taken this semester um, as they will be initiated at that point or if you have anybody who's transferred you need to add them when you add them to the system they'll get this login email here where they'll go in to create their account if it is returning users they will just use their same login information that they previously used but any new user will need to create their account or if you use any other products like Omega One, My Omega Phi, and they already have a login, make sure you're adding them with the same email and they'll be able to log in with those credentials as well. We'll go ahead and get into the system looking at this today. So from what we can see here, this account still has fall like formal recruitment data. So for those who are going directly into COB following fall recruitment, you may need some of this data still, or even come spring, let's say um, some people who previously did not participate in COB, but maybe went through formal recruitment in the fall or anything like that, 
They may be people that you already have had interactions with and data on. So you'll want to make sure that before master resetting the system for any type of informal recruitment that you pull any reporting that you have um, and any data that is currently here. So on this screen here, we can go to what we call the little hamburger menu over here because it looks like a little hamburger. We'll click on that and export PM list. This is going to give you pretty much everything in the, this list. Um, I can go ahead and just show you this as an example. This is probably the most like comprehensive in terms of everything here. So just to give an idea of what that looks like, it'll give you MINs, uh, any like pools they were in, if you have primary and secondary, if that's the thing for you guys, their uh, statuses for each round. So if at the end they're inactive, you'll see that there. And then um, these negative ones just mean they don't have a vote. So yours should be full if recruitment is over, um, but it has votes for every single round as well as like their picture, their class, any information that you have on them will be here. You're not going to have your comments if there were any comments, but you can pull that with some other reporting. But this is probably the most comprehensive. You'll definitely want to pull this one for just the most amount of data. And then once you've pulled that, if you want to make sure you just have everything you need, like I said, comments is not on this here. So any other data you want to use under the PNM tab over here on the right you can go to reports and generate any of these reports here you can filter how you want it to look if you want it to only be active pnms i would do all of them if this is post recruitment so that way you can see anybody who maybe did not get invited back after a certain point any inactive pnms include your comments in there if you want those this is going to be just a general pnm list you have your pnm status which you may not need this but go ahead and pull it just in case um, your votes and you can break this down further so if you want to do votes for each round and then include your comments you can break that down a comments report in general. Then we also have a slideshow if you want to pull that. Uh, voter distribution if you want to see the way that your members were voting throughout the recruitment process. And then as well as pulling your vote audit report, this is going to show any votes that were changed within the recruitment process. So you can um, pull that. It'll show you who changed the vote, what the vote was previously, and what it was changed to. If your organization has categories that they may vote on, it'll show the category that was changed as well. Um, so any of the information you need for vote changes, you can get in this vote audit report. You can also pull information from the hub here if you'd like. So this, we don't have many votes in this particular system, but if you've just gone through recruitment, this should be pretty full of data and you can flip the little graph here and download any of the data if you want a more comprehensive view of what the statistics look like during recruitment you can pull all of these as well so this is the information you want to pull like i said especially if you're going directly into cob and there may be some pnms that are still able to get um, a snap bid or a bid from from your organization that had gone through formal recruitment make sure you've pulled that information and once you've done that I would go ahead and over here on the right hand side go to your users you can go ahead and add users if you want but the biggest thing I would make sure you do before your master reset and especially before the master reset in spring as well because the master reset that we do in spring as a system-wide Master reset will erase all users except for admins. The one you do in the system does not do that. It just erases all the data that you have within the system, but your users will st still be there. But you'll want to make sure that you have the correct people listed as admins. So go ahead and go into your users, and this is where your admins are, like where you can change them to be an admin or not. Make sure the correct people are updated. So if you are changing admins at any point, especially after the end of fall semester, if you'll have a different admin for spring, go ahead and get that updated so that they have access to the system. Once you're done updating your users, and again, if you want to add your users, you can add any new users that you may have coming into informal recruitment. And then once you have 
done that, you can either do it individually or upload a spreadsheet here. We can go ahead and do the master reset. So the master reset is going to be here under the chapter tab and we'll go all the way over to master reset. So with the master reset, this is going to be something that erases all of the data in the system. That's why we pull the reporting beforehand. So any of your votes, comments, any PNMs listed, that will all be wiped from the system and effectively set it back to before recruitment. And you'll just have a clean slate to work with. So make sure everything that you need is pulled before you do this master reset. You cannot go back once the master reset is done. That's why we have several warnings on this. And this is something you don't want to do in the middle of recruitment. So um, we normally only do it after recruitment and same I would say with COB if you're doing continuous open bidding you'll want to make sure that you don't master reset at any point until you have um, finished with the process so we'll go ahead and master reset the account and once that is done we'll go back to the PNM list it'll probably direct us yep so it'll direct you to go ahead and put in your recruitment date so it'll take us actually back to that chapter tab and we'll go to the edit chapter. You can just put in your recruitment dates. Um, for COB, if you don't have a sp uh, particular range that you're recruiting in, you can just pick whatever start date and then whatever date you think your COB will end, um, whatever that looks like for you guys, and then just save it. Uh, once you've saved that, you'll be able to go to the PM list here, which doubles as the setup page, and kind of start from scratch. So we do have practice files here that if you want to kind of look at this before you start your COB, you can, um, or if you're ready to go ahead and start and you just want to upload uh, the PNMs as you get them, you can do that too. But you'll want to first start by setting up your recruitment rounds. So for COB, there's a few different ways that you can do this for informal recruitment. But uh, for this, I think we'll do number of interactions. You can also do it by months if it's going to span like a longer period that you're going to be doing continuous open bidding. Kind of just depends on what's going to work for your chapter. Just remember that each member can only submit one vote per round. So keep that in mind for how you may want to set it up. We're going to do three rounds here and just set them up as like each count as an interaction uh, with the PNM. So round, you know, you don't have to rename them. If you want to rename them, you can. If you're having in particular like informal events, you can I would um you can name the rounds by that, but depending on if PNMs come to those rounds, you may just want to again have them by interaction. Um, and then that way you can submit the votes accordingly. And we'll kind of see how you can organize that once we get back to the PNM list. So we're just gonna do this here. We're gonna leave it open voting. Um, if you guys have used formal recruitment and used party voting, just the difference with that is typically with formal recruitment, you're going to have a larger number. The parties help organize that and not have so many PMs to field through when you're voting. You probably won't need that for COB. If you want to do parties, you can set that up, but more than likely, um, open voting is going to be perfectly fine for what you need for this. So we'll go ahead and save this. And again, if you wanted to do it by month, you could do that as well. Um, and then name it by each month that for each round, you can set it up that way as well. With that being said, just remember you can't have any more than 20 rounds. So if you think there's gonna be X amount of interactions, just know there's no more than 20 rounds you can set up. And if your organization has any like um, admin scoring, that can count as rounds. So just make sure as you're setting that up, you're not going over that limit. So we'll now go back to the PNM list. Here, the setup page, we can see the first step has disappeared. We'll go ahead and upload PNMs um, for, I'm gonna upload our test file for, for you guys, depending on how many PNMs or if you're you know, gathering them as you go, bringing people in um, for different interactions, you may not have a file to upload them by. Um, you can also add them just 
one by one. So you can upload the PNMs here. Um, this is the page that the setup page is going to take you to is the mass upload version. And then if you just want to add them individually, you can do add PNM and it will look like this. There's only three actually required fields. And looking at that on the upload PNMs, there are some detailed instructions. You'll still need to follow these just like you would in any formal recruitment setting. Just make sure this is plain text, no special um, formatting or anything, and you should be good to go. These are all the headers you can use. You don't have to use all of these, but if you have this information, you want to put it in. These are great uh, fields to be able to, to look at when you're looking at your data and comparing your PNMs that are coming through. The MIN or PNM ID, you will need to have that. This just gives the PNM like a differentiation other than their name. You know, you may have multiple Ashley Smiths or something like that. So the MIN gives them their unique identifier for informal recruitment, COB type thing, you aren't going to be given this by any type of system like you normally would with formal recruitment. So you can just number your PNMs as you add them. So, you know, their MIN can be one through 10 if there's only 10 PNMs that you guys are having interactions with, however you want to do that. And then again, you don't have to use all of these. The only required ones are the MIN and then I believe the first and last name. And then the rest is just beneficial for you guys. And then just save that as the Excel 97 2003 workbook and you'll be able to upload the file. If anything is wrong with the file, just like how this, it'll tell you, it'll have a box instead and it'll say it wasn't successful. And then it'll tell you any issues that may have popped up down here and it'll tell you what row it's in so you can easily adjust that. So once you've added your PNMs, then you can get started any way you need. Our suggestion for COB, so you'll see the steps like disappear as you go. When you upload your users, that step disappears. So we have advancing rounds and parties. These are going to stay because you continue to like use these throughout your process. But because this looks a little different than formal recruitment, you can go ahead and like if you want to open up round one voting so that anybody who has first interactions can go ahead and put that in. This would also be the time if any data, like if you technically, you know, an interaction can count as if they've already come through formal recruitment and they've had an interaction, then you can put in that data as their round one interaction. So you can go in and manually add that voting. Um, if you're doing that for your members, you would go under their user. Um, so go to the user list. And if you know that Hannah has already spoken to whatever PNM, you'll go to add votes. This is in a super user account, so I'm not able to do it from here, but you'll be able to go to add votes and then you can add a vote to a particular PNM for your member. And then it'll show in the PNM list. So you can do that for first interactions if you want to go ahead and get that started. And then another way you can organize this at any point, you can put in admin notes accordingly and you can also use under the columns here, there's a few different things. So you can bring in any of the columns you want. You can do, we suggest using the tags for COB and you can also bring in like if you want to see their interest um, or if you there's not party so you don't need to see their party you can deselect that accordingly so any of the ones that you feel like you need go ahead and pull those in and the list or the the chart will adjust accordingly so admin notes may be something like they graduated early from high school you can just double click into here or if they're like an honors college, whatever you want to put in the admin notes you can use for the tags. Um, this is a great way to tag what type of interaction that you guys had. So let's say for Shelby, for the interactions that she had, you guys met, she came to like the coffee shop meet and greet you guys had, something like that. Um, or, and then maybe for the other one, she um, went through formal recruitment as well. So she has both of those. Oh, be able to see those tags accordingly. I don't think I hit enter. Nope, I didn't. And then you'll be able to see those tags within her thing here. So that's how you can kind of track the interactions they have. And in this also, you can 
add more rounds if you need. The only thing I would caution on is if your organization has any type of like particular configuration in the way they calculate those votes, make sure you're checking out your configuration page and, and see maybe how you need to adjust the calculations accordingly to work for you guys. So like if um, pref round is normally like calculated X way, you might leave that one blank and or however it needs to work on your end, but just double check that. But as people start putting in votes, they will um, show in the overall column here. And then also if you have each round selected, you'll be able to see it here as well. Now for the voting, one thing I will say about that, um, it is going to be a little bit more of a manual process of moving in between rounds and maybe like leaving voting open accordingly. So let's say somebody has already had their first interaction, you may need to open voting for round two so they can put in a second interaction vote um, or you may be manually adding those votes if that is easier for you to do. With COB, it is, it's not quite as structured, so depending on what works best, if you're not having a ton of votes come in and you just want to add those manually, you can do that. Um, or again, you would just have to often go in here to rotate in between rounds so that a person can enter a new vote for a new interaction. So if they've already spoken with a girl twice and need to add the vote for the second interaction, you can go ahead and open round two voting so that they're able to put that in. You'll just need to switch it back for anybody who needs to put in a first interaction vote for another PNM and et cetera. You can also still use our matching tool if you want members to submit recommendations when putting in votes. So on ballots, they have the option to put in recommendations still as well as on their profile, they can submit recommendations. So if they've spoken with a PNM and they think that, you know, um, a certain member would be really great to speak with that PNM, they can put in that recommendation. So you can still under the matching tool here, if you want to use the recommendations to match people accordingly, you can still use the interest in hometowns as well. You may have a smaller number of max, so you don't have as much to sift through, uh, but this can still be a great way to figure out who needs to talk to who, even if it is in a more casual environment, just trying to get the right people to speak with the PNM if that is something recommended by another member. And I know we already talked about admin notes and tag and statuses. So with COB, again, it is a little more of a manual process. So if at any point you guys decide that you're not going to extend a bid to someone or they have declined a bid um, or if they've accepted and you need to change their status, um, just like you right click with the tags, if you right click on any portion of the PM, you can change their status accordingly. So if whatever it may be. Regret is typically like normally like informal recruitment, like when they're not invited back, you can do that. Or if they've accepted a bid, you can go ahead and mark them as recruited. Um, however, you're needing to change their status and then typically it'll change color accordingly. And then that's a great way to organize these as well, since you can't delete a PNM during recruitment, but you can always update this accordingly so that at least it's color coded and you can see if somebody's inactive or not, or, you know, again, accepted a bid, declined, you decided not to extend a bid since this process of continuous open bidding is not as formal. You definitely want to make sure you're keeping up with your um, statuses here. So go through and update those accordingly as needed. And that's going to be the best way to kind of organize your PMs as you're going through. And I think that is pretty much it in terms of kind of ways you can organize for continuous open bidding. We'll go ahead and I'm going to, we're going to go to Q&A, um, but before we do, one other thing to show you guys is this little get help button here. If you do have any questions, you can click the get help and we do have, and we have a section that is specific to COB. So if you want to search COB, you can get some articles here um, that can help you 
with that, some of the things we've gone over today, as well as like a previous uh, video, if you want to look at that, important factors, certain things like that, we have all of these here, or any other general questions you might have, put it in the search here, and more than likely we have an article out there to help you out. Um, but Hannah, we'll go ahead and see if we have any questions. Okay, yeah, I do have a few that have come through. Um, the first one was just asking if the master reset will get rid of all of their users and if they'll have to re-import those. Yeah, so if you are master resetting your chapter yourself, you will keep all your users in there. That will not um, erase your users. The system-wide master reset that we do in the spring will wipe your users and you'll have to re-add those except for your admins. Those will stay in the system. That's why it's important to update your admins. It's also a really good idea if you have like an advisor or someone who is consistently going to be an admin in the system that you put them there that way if somebody leaves and you need to update the admins that you're able to do that and that that person isn't like gone and nobody has access to the system but that's the only time users will be wiped out is during that and we'll send several emails beforehand so make sure you pay attention to those and just like look out for them but when you're doing your manual master reset within the system no you will be able to keep all your users they'll stay within the system Perfect. Thank you. And then um, these are two questions from the same person. So I'm just going to read them together. They asked if um, they do a grade check or does CPC grade check girls before COB dates? I don't know if CPC is like their college panelonic council or like a recruitment advisor or somebody, but they were asking about those grade checks before COB. And then they also asked if there was a minimum score needed to extend a bid. Yeah, so for both of those, it um, I think kind of depends on the chapter. I will say mm -hmm. for the grade check, I think typically your chapter is not able to grade check. So if you have a girl that is um, a potential new member, you'll have to report them to your CPC like if you're, if that's your um, collegiate panelinic council um, or NPC, whatever you use, like your Greek advisor, you'll have to report them there and they will be able to grade check for you. Um, that way you can ensure that they have whatever the minimum GPA is in your bylaws to be able to be offered a bid if that's what you wanna do. Um, with the minimum score needed to extend a bid, that's kind of up to the chapter um, in terms of, like what their scoring system looks like. Again, if your organization has any like particular scoring, the regular scoring is just a scale. So if you wanna have a certain cutoff of where you think a score needs to be under or above in order to you know receive or not receive a bid, um, that is up to you to, to kind of give that baseline for your chapter and that's also why it's important to like make sure your girls are um, when they're voting if you want to kind of give them a, a talk beforehand about when voting making sure thinking about those things and not just giving everybody high scores because they were nice or low scores because they just didn't like them or whatever it may be um, voting based on whether they fit best in the organization and then hopefully with them understanding that you're able to better indicate like what level is going to be your cutoff. Um, so that's kind of, again, up to you guys as a chapter, what you want that to look like, as well as, you know, you can, you can use the overall scores to kind of get a baseline, like list of how each girl ranks, but you can also look through the comments and everything. Um, and then depending on how your chapter does that as a whole, if you guys look at that together and then decide who you're extending bids, just kind of following whatever process that you guys need to that would be my suggestion for that. Awesome, thank you, Sarah Beth. And then this one's a quick one. They asked if there's a webinar or training over how to use a mega recruit during recruitment. Um, so like a video they could refer to or a webinar they could sign up for? Yeah, so we do have several, um, if you're talking about like formal recruitment videos as well. So um, in the app, we also have under training, um, step by step of like setting up for formal recruitment and then up here we have a link to one of our formal recruitment videos on our YouTube channel so you can get that in the app or again under our 
get help here in the knowledge base. We have videos and webinars that you can look at. Um, our summer webinar series, these are all going to be the same content. So if you want to click on one of those or the most recent just to get an idea, it'll take you through that recruitment setup process, as well as I believe we have um, a webinar from last year about COB as well. Uh, but it's going to be very similar to what we just did to them. So yeah, we do have those videos available out there. So you can look at our knowledge base or you can go to our YouTube channel as well. And then here under training, if you're talking specifically about formal recruitment, we have that right there. Thank you. And then we have one more question. And they asked, um, how can they add a user's info that started in formal recruitment, but is now eligible for COB if they want to use that information that they had before? Yeah, so you would add them as a PNM. So again, either through an upload, if you have like a list of girls you already know that are like eligible for COB that you're looking at, or you can add them regularly. So you'll have to re-add them since you done, did a master reset. So let's say for example, like Caroline is um, a root somebody that has already gone through and you're wanting to add her information you would go to whatever user has voted on her previously and update them accordingly so under your user list if hannah previously voted on her during formal recruitment i would go to hannah and then go to add vote and under here i would be able to add the vote you'll want to make sure that whatever interaction you're counting that is so if it's going to be interaction one because that's you know the first interaction you guys have had then you'll want to make sure that round one voting is open and then you'll add the vote and it'll show you like a, a ballot let me see if i can log into that really quick and i can show you what the ballot would look like more specifically but it'll basically show you the ballot and where you can add and like you can pick the number so you'll have the data before so if hannah voted on her before you'll be able to see exactly what numerical vote that she put for that pnm and add that accordingly and then that'll show within the pnm list the same as it did before um, okay so looking at this if i want to go to the user list and add a vote for a pnm i would go to the user and then again make sure you're in the right round and add vote so it'll show you the ballot just like how it would show them um, you can also open round one and have them go in and put a vote uh, like if they spoke to them multiple times during formal recruitment and you just want to consolidate that and have them give an overall vote you can just open round one voting see this is what i was saying you have to make sure so like even though i changed it to round one it's still showing round two because that's the round that's open so make sure whatever round you want the vote to count for especially if you're using it as interactions that you have that particular round open um, and then it should show the corrected round you may have to refresh it to like reset that and then it'll show what round you're putting that in for and then you can just select the pnm that they've previously voted on put it in again if they voted multiple times because they spoke to them multiple times then you may just say hey everybody like go in and if you spoke to a particular pnm during formal recruitment put in an overall vote for your first interaction for her however you want to do that but this is what that's kind of going to look like and then you can put that there and hit submit and then when you go to the PNM list, it'll show that she has a vote now. Uh, were there any other questions, Hannah? Those were it. I don't okay. see any more. Perfect. I am gonna just go ahead and leave this up here really quick. Um, I know previously we had a different email for this, so just kind of a PSA for the email change. If you aren't already aware, Software Supported Omega Phi is what you'll email if you need help with anything recruitment related um, and they'll get you taken care of so if you want to just send them an email with any questions you may have especially during that time of recruitment they'll be able to help you out but thank you guys so much for joining us today we hope you have a wonderful rest of your fall and um, good luck with any COB recruitment you may be having